<laughs> Indeed. Darren Brent alongside. You and I have probably done more homework for this next section than I think anything we've ever done before. Pages and pages of it. And with all the information I have, I can tell you that England will not win the World Cup. No, as I said, I've got good players, but I just feel that there are better squads out there that will cause more problems. There's so much expectation on our shoulders, isn't there? Is it because it's, you know, that we still haven't won it since 60? Or is it because we've done pretty well at the last two tournaments? Or is it a mixture of both? I, think it's, it? I think it's a mixture of both. For one, I think we overhype the national team. To, for, so if they don't win it, it's failure. And then, of course, what Gareth Southgate has done, World Cup semi-final, Euros final, losing on penalties in the Euros. I think that, that's built expectation. So that's why I think it's so nerve-wracking. Um, for Not even so much nerve-wracking why people put England as one of the favourites because I feel like, regardless of form, because they haven't had a, a good Nations League, you'd have to say, regardless of form, people mm. will all go before major tournament. I think it's like England will win it. England will win it. Silly boys. Let's speak to someone that knows more about European football than me, him and all of you put together. The wonderful Kevin Hatchard. Kevin, good How afternoon. Are chaps? Oh, sorry, I've jumped in there. I oh thought you'd my. left me a gap. Wow. You, 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 you start again. Happens Let, now. You start again. What happens? No, you've got, you've got to let him go again. Start, start again. Start again. Well, so you want the big up as well, like how great you are. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, time to talk European football now with uh, the master <laughs> of European football knowledge. He is the wonderful Kevin Hatchard. Kevin, good afternoon. How are we, chaps? We well? Excellently well. <laughs> we're good. We're very well. Um, I'll start off with the obvious question. If you look at the bookies, Brazil, their favourites at nine to two, four and a half to one. France, eleven to two. That's five and a half to one. Then England, third favourites at sixes. Is that because I'm looking at the odds over in England and lots of people are putting money on England to win it, or is that genuinely the feeling across the board, across the nation, that England are third favourites to win this year's World Cup? England are always a shorter price than they should be because there's a lot of patriotic money that gets lumps on mm. England fairly early on. I, I always think, I, I think you're right. I think the narrative around England is generally uh, too hyped. I, I think England, if you look at a lot of their performances in European championships and, and certainly World Cups, if you go out of a World Cup in the quarterfinals, then basically you're one of the top eight nations around. It, you know, that's crude, but over time... That's probably about right. I look at this World Cup and think England are one of a group of six, seven or eight who can win it. And I think that they do have a chance. I don't look at this World Cup and think England can't win it. I think they'll have learned a lot from what happened at the European Championship. I think that pain can be instructive. It can be useful. I think Gareth Southgate will have learned from that final against Italy because I don't think he was bold enough or proactive enough with his substitutions. And I think he might have learnt a bit from that. So they know that they can go deep in a major tournament uh, and they certainly have the quality to do that. So, Kev, I'm going to put you on the spot straight away. And who do you think will win it? See, I, I got stitched up by France last time because I said that they were going to win the Euros. But I do look at them and think that they're a very exciting side. I think Didier Deschamps still has things to work out. There is a question mark over Paul Pogba. I thought it was really interesting that Deschamps said that he is not a lock to be in this squad. If he's not fully fit and playing well for Juventus, according to Deschamps, he's not going to go. And he said that's what Pogba wants as well. He said unless he feels he can actually contribute, what's the point in taking him? He's just had a, an operation. So it's going to take a while for him to recover. It's going to take a while for him to be up to full speed. So it'll be interesting to see how that works. But they do have the... The guy who I think is, you know, only by a little bit, but the world's most talented player in Kylian Mbappe. And they have a huge amount of quality beside that. Do you believe that with Pogba? We've had it with Beckham before, you know, with his metatarsal. When he, he went to the World Cup, he wasn't fully fit. We've had it with other players as well. I, I just feel Pogba's so important to France that even if, you know, if there's a 20% chance of him being ready for that first game, irrelevant of his fitness, I'm sure he'll go to the World Cup with them. Yeah, but there's a lot of kind of Farrago and hype that comes with him, and that's not his fault necessarily. But there are distractions that come with having him in the squad because there'll be a lot of talk about why isn't he starting, should he be starting. Um, he's a world-class player. I'm a huge fan of his. Mm. Uh, I thought he was magnificent at the World Cup and also magnificent in games at the Euros, but obviously it all went horribly wrong against Switzerland. I wonder how much that Switzerland experience has taught them uh, about sloppiness, about complacency. 
you'd have thought that it will have will have taught them a few things. And I still think they're, they'll be there or thereabouts. I do feel it's wide open. I, I, I do. I look at Argentina, obviously, won the Copa America. Messi is playing brilliant football for Paris. And he's in a few games in Liga without being detrimental to Liga, where he doesn't have to physically, you know, play at 100% all the time, necessarily. Mm. Um that's not to do with the quality, but, you know, there are going to be games where Paris are 4-0 up after an hour and he can either be substituted or he can kind of slow down a bit. Mm. Well, going back I think to... they'll, they'll be there in that. But... Going, I think you broke up I was just going to say Germany as well. Germany, OK. We'll talk about the Germans in a moment. I just want to go back to England just for a moment, Kev. When, when you talk about England's chances, right, I think there's two ways of looking at it. One is, well, we got to the final of the Euros and the semi-final of the World Cup, so why can't we go one further? Or... You look at the teams that we played to get that far and you think, well, we only drew with Colombia, albeit we beat them on pens. We lost to Belgium. We beat Panama and Tunisia. When you look at the Euros, you know, we beat Germany, weren't a great German team. We just about got past the Czech Republic. We drew nil-nil with Scotland. So when you're analysing what you think England would do at this year's World Cup, are you looking at previous tournaments or are you genuinely looking at the opponents we've got? Because there's... There's no doubt we'll get out of the... I'll say this now, but there's no doubt we'll get out of the group. Iran, <laughs> Iran, USA and Wales. I mean, that should cause no problem. But then, We've done it now. When, okay. uh, well, when you look at who we could play next... We could have Senegal, then France, Belgium, Brazil. And if we you know, if we get to the final, it would be the Brazilians we'd play. But how do you sum up England's chances? Is it by the teams that we're going to face or the fact that we've done well previously? I, I think it's a bit of both. I, th- I think the group being fairly kind does no harm at all. Um, you'd expect England to win that group. And obviously you come out of a group then with a bit, fair bit of confidence. I, I, I understand people's argument about strength of schedule and who England have played in major tournaments, but you can't do anything about that. You can only beat what's put in front of you. And England have generally done that pretty well. And I think going deep in tournaments, getting through tight games, winning penalty shootouts, which they did obviously finally against Colombia, uh, and that kind of changed the narrative a bit. All of that stuff helps. So it's entirely possible that they could get to a quarter final, get a really hard opponent, and get knocked out. That's tournament football. Why have Manchester City, far and away the best team in England over the last few years, why have they never won the Champions League? Because it's cup football and it's weird, and managers make weird decisions, random things happen that shouldn't happen. And that's the fun of it, that's the thrill of it. So would I put my house on England winning it? No. But do I think England are a group, one of a group of countries that can? Yeah, absolutely. Kev, so you started to mention it there, and I would ask you about Germany, because I'm looking at their squad. Oof, they have got some serious talent in their squad. Maybe weren't the best at the Euros, certainly when England met them. But when you look at this current crop of, of German players, they could be in the mix. Yeah, they could. And I think there's been a big shift in terms of the vibe of the team since Hansi Flick took over. I think he's one of the best coaches in international football. Some people would argue maybe the best, actually, in terms of what he's been able to achieve at club level, although I think Deschamps would tap you on the shoulder about that one as well. But he has got some incredible footballers. He's got Manuel Neuer, who is still a terrific goalkeeper, Uh, even though he's been a little shaky at times for Bayern uh, in the early part of this season. He's got an incredible midfield, The potential of having a fully fit Goretzka and Kimmich in that midfield is obviously very appealing. Ilkay Gundogan, another terrific player. So he's he's spoiled for choice in that midfield area. And then you look at guys like Gnabry and Sané. And I know Timo Werner gets a lot of stick for his time at Chelsea, but he can be a very effective player. And for me, they have one of the great rising stars in European football right now in Jamal Musiala who I've seen on a regular basis for Bayern get better and better and better. He affects the game. He scores goals. He makes goals. The half turn he produced uh, for Bayern in midweek against Barcelona to set up Zane's goal was brilliant. So I think they're confident and I think they should be. Uh, Just quickly, I'm looking at the French side. No Fafana in it. Will he have a chance of making the World Cup? Uh, He has a chance, but they they do have a fair few options. Pepe's out injured at the moment. I think he'd have to be he'd have to be playing and he'd have to be playing really well. So I think it's a stretch, but I think there's an acceptance that 
he is a really talented God, player. Their, their defenders are amazing. Aren't Meccano, they? Saliba, Kunde, wow. Well, that's it, and it's 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 that incredible depth that means Fofana's got a lot of work to do. And of course, he, you know, he missed pretty much a whole year for Leicester with injury, so that didn't help him at all. So, mm. yeah, I think I think that is going to be a stretch. But yeah. I, I look at these groups. I mean, there's so many good teams. I mean, the Netherlands. You know, you look at the spine of that team. I worry a little bit about the goalkeeping position, but you've got Matthijs de Ligt, you've got um, obviously Virgil van Dijk, you've got some quality in midfield. The, the biggest question mark, I guess, with them is how much football is Memphis Depay going to play in between now and the World Cup? Mm. That's that's the only concern because he's not a first choice for Barcelona right now. Keb, you're our first choice when um, everyone else is not available. <laughs> uh, but... Well, that's nice to know. <laughs> Listen, you're a superstar as always. Thanks for coming on. Have a great weekend. Cheers, gents. Um, there you go, the wonderful Kevin Hanshard. Who did it? You asked him. Who did he say was going to win it? He thinks that um, France. He said he got he got stung before with France. Oh, yeah, okay, who are you going for? I think Brazil. Or, but you know what? The more I look at this Germany squad, I think, oh my goodness. Because he said about Neuer. What about Ter Stegen? That like, is their number two. Yeah. Yeah, but they're goalkeepers, right? Doesn't matter. Well, N- Neuer makes a big the difference. The rest of their team's pretty good. It's going to be fun, isn't it? It's going to be great. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.